Eight months pregnant, Emma was already exhausted, but her in-laws insisted that she clean their house for an upcoming party. The overwhelming demands that were added to her condition left her feeling trapped and helpless. Her husband Mark, who always supported her, became increasingly frustrated with his parents' unreasonable expectations. When Mark heard about this, he decided enough was enough and took matters into his own hands. I could see the turmoil behind his eyes. He loved his parents, but the way they treated me was simply unacceptable. He didn't mean to be disrespectful to them, but they were disrespectful to me, and I was eight months pregnant. He had no choice but to make it clear to his parents that they couldn't treat me like that. But words alone weren't enough. That wasn't the first time they disrespected me, you know? Honestly, before I got pregnant, it was even worse. Mark, you don't have to do this. I whispered as I sat at the kitchen table. I looked at Mark with tears in his eyes. I can't take this anymore, he replied. I had just told him what his parents wanted me to do, and that had hit him hard. That day I had gone to his parents' house for lunch. That's what they had told me. But when I arrived, no lunch was prepared. There you are at last, said his mother Connie, and led me into the kitchen without even saying hello. I'm starving, she continued, instructing me to make a sandwich for her and her husband. I was used to them treating me like a maid, so this didn't surprise me. I was more angry with myself because I thought they would actually invite me to lunch. Well, I made the damn sandwiches and sat down at the table with them to eat. Then the real rudeness began. I finished my sandwich first, which Connie saw as an opportunity. You were hungry, weren't you? She said jokingly as she started on the second half of her sandwich. I joked back and said I was eating for two, but she didn't laugh. She quickly changed the subject and said they were having a party tomorrow. Oh, Connie, how lovely. Unfortunately, I can't come because of the baby, but maybe Mark will come. I replied, thinking they would invite us. Connie laughed awkwardly. Mark is already invited, but this isn't your kind of party, love. I invited you over to clean the house and prepare for tomorrow. You don't mind, do you? She said, as if it was the most normal thing in the world to ask a woman who was eight months pregnant. At first I thought she was joking, but then I remembered that Connie never jokes. Never. I scoffed, feeling anger boiling up inside me. I had never yelled at my husband's parents before, but now I definitely wanted to. Luckily, I managed to keep my composure and slowly got up from the table. Actually, it does bother me a little. I simply said and walked out the door. I went straight to my car and called my husband, who was crying. Stupid pregnancy hormones. After that, I went straight home and my husband did the same. And here we were in the kitchen. Him with an expression on his face that I had never seen before, and I was afraid that he would do something he would later regret. We're going to that party tomorrow, he finally said and stormed out of the room. I didn't know what he was planning to do at the party, but I wasn't really in the mood to be nice to his parents. That night, Mark was nicer to me than ever before. He took care of me and did almost everything I asked. I knew it was mostly because he felt guilty about his parents treating me like I was beneath them, but I really appreciated it. The next day, Mark and I were awakened early in the morning by a call that kept reaching him. When he picked up the phone, he found that it was his mother and she was not happy. She complained that I was a lazy pig and that I was costing them money because they now had to hire a cleaning lady. Without saying a word, Mark hung up the phone and hoped I didn't hear, but I did. That evening we got ready for the party in silence. The tension between us was high. Mark was clutching his tie angrily and I was fumbling with my dress buttons. Neither of us spoke, each lost in his own thoughts. The weight of what was to come pressed heavily upon us. When I looked at him, I could see how determined he was. He had a plan, one that would make his parents realize how serious the situation was. In the car, the determination in Mark's eyes was clear. He gripped the steering wheel tightly, his knuckles white. We need to make things right, he said firmly. I nodded, feeling a mixture of anxiety and relief. We drove in silence, but the air was charged with unspoken words. As we approached his parents' house, his resolve did not waver. I knew nothing could stop him now, not this time. We approached his parents' house, the threat of confrontation in the air. Mark parked the car, and we both took a deep breath before getting out. The familiar house seemed different, permeated by an air of inevitable conflict. As we walked up the path to the door, I felt my heart racing. 
Mark's hand in mine was the only calming force, a silent promise of support. We arrived early and the tension was as thick as fog. Connie opened the door with a forced smile, her lips pressed tightly together. I'm glad you made it, she said, but her eyes betrayed something else. The polite facade could barely hide her anger from earlier. Mark didn't return the smile, and as we entered, I knew this was just the calm before the storm. Mark ignored Connie's feigned hospitality and led me inside. He led me purposefully through the house and found me a comfortable seat. Stay here and don't worry, he whispered, squeezing my hand reassuringly. The house was busy with preparation for the party, but he was focused only on me. When he was sure I was settled, he sat up, ready to face what was coming next. The guests streamed in, and the atmosphere became more and more exuberant with each new guest. Mark's parents greeted everyone with big, practiced smiles, as if everything was perfect. Welcome, please make yourself at home. Connie chimed with sugary sweetness. Mark stayed by my side the whole time, his hand occasionally stroking mine and giving me support. I could sense the unease simmering beneath the surface, a tension that no amount of forced smiles could hide. Mark moved around the room and mingled with the guests, his face a mask of calm. He shook hands, exchanged pleasantries, and flashed polite smiles. Every few minutes, he glanced in my direction, his eyes conveying a quiet reassurance. The guests, unaware of his inner turmoil, chatted happily among themselves. I sat back, watching his every move and waiting for the moment when he would finally address the simmering tension. Connie, who never misses an opportunity, made several disparaging remarks about my absence the previous day. Some people just can't handle responsibility, she said loudly, glancing in my direction. Each comment was a deliberate dig, testing Mark's patience. He set his jaw but remained silent, although I could see the fire in his eyes. It was only a matter of time before he had enough. With each passing moment, the tension between Mark and his parents grew, tightening like an invisible thread and threatening to break. The conversations revolved around us, but the underlying tension was obvious. Mark's parents continued their charade, laughing and smiling with the guests as if nothing had happened. But Mark's glances became more frequent, his determination became harder. The moment of confrontation was indisputably approaching. Connie could no longer hold back and complained loudly to the guests about those who do not value family. Some people just don't get it, she said, her voice dripping with contempt. Mark, standing nearby, stiffened. It was obvious that she was talking about me, and that pushed him to his limits. The murmurs of agreement from some of the guests only added fuel to the fire. Mark couldn't take it anymore. He walked over to Connie, his face grim. The room seemed to hold its breath as he approached her. When he finally spoke, his voice was calm and commanding. Enough, Mom, he said, and the words rippled through the room. Connie's eyes widened in shock, as if she couldn't believe what she was hearing from her usually compliant son. The room fell dead silent as Mark's words hung in the air. All eyes were on the unfolding drama, the tension crackling like static electricity. Connie looked stunned, her mouth opening and closing without a sound. The guests exchanged uncomfortable glances, unsure of what to do or say. The air was thick with anticipation, everyone waiting to see what would happen next, as if the world had stopped to listen. Mark stared at his mother, his voice firm and full of controlled anger. You have no right to talk about Emma like that, he said, each word carefully considered and waited. Connie's face turned red with embarrassment and anger. She is my wife and the mother of your future grandchild. If you can't respect her, you can't expect respect. He added determinately, the tension increasing with each word. Connie, taken aback and humiliated, shot back. You are so ungrateful. After everything we've done for you, Mark didn't flinch. Ungrateful? Let's talk about it, he countered, his voice rising. He began to list all the cases of abuse, the years of disrespect and belittlement. As he spoke, the guests around them became visibly uncomfortable, realizing that this was more than just a family dispute. It was a deep-rooted problem. As the argument boiled over, Mark's voice broke through the chaos. I will not tolerate this anymore, he declared in a determined tone. The words were a final, unyielding line in the sand. 
Connie was stunned for a moment, processing what he said. Mark's frustration had reached its peak, and this time, he didn't back down. The weight of his words hung heavy in the air, marking a decisive moment. Tears welled up in Mark's eyes as he looked at his parents. I love you both, but your behavior has hurt me deeply, he confessed in a shaky voice. The room remained silent, every guest listening attentively. Mark's vulnerability was palpable, his usually strong demeanor crumbling under the weight of years of unspoken pain. It was clear that this moment had been brewing for a long time. Mark took a deep breath and gathered his emotions. Your behavior has divided this family, he continued. You've not only hurt me, but you've hurt Emma too, especially now that she's pregnant. His words were raw and unfiltered, cutting through the room like a knife. You made us feel unwelcome and undervalued, and that drove us apart. The truth of his pain was visible to all. His emotional revelation began to sink in. Guests and family members exchanged glances and recognized the seriousness of the situation. The conversations died down. The festive atmosphere was replaced by something much more serious. A murmur of understanding and concern went through the crowd. It was becoming increasingly clear that this was not just a family dispute, but an outbreak of deep-rooted problems. The weight of Mark's words was undeniable. Mark calmed down, and there was a new determination in his voice. This has to change, he declared. Otherwise, you will no longer be part of our child's life. His words hung in the air, heavy with finality. A sigh of relief echoed through the room. The seriousness of his ultimatum was unmistakable. The well-being of our child and our happiness are now my top priorities, he added. The message was clear. Change was no longer optional. The seriousness of Mark's words was profound. The room was stunned and the seriousness of his ultimatum triggered an unmistakable change. Connie and her husband looked stunned as the stark reality sunk in. The guests stood wide-eyed, taking in the full impact of Mark's explanation. The silence was deafening, the tension unmistakable. This was a turning point, a point that required attention and immediate thought. Mark stood firm, his eyes fixed on his parents. The well-being of our child and our happiness are now my top priorities, he said firmly. Connie and her husband shifted uncomfortably, the weight of his words pressing down on them. The room was completely silent, each guest hanging on his statement. Mark's resolve was crystal clear. There was no doubt about his determination to protect our future, whatever the cost. Later, when the guests had left and the house had become quieter, Mark revealed his true motive. I wanted to use this party to expose their unfriendly nature, he admitted. You should see how they treated us. His voice was calm, but firm as he explained his plan. It was a bold move, but one he felt was necessary for the good of our growing family. Mark's plan was clear. Everyone should see the abuse we had suffered. It's not just about us, he explained to the few remaining family members. It's about making sure that this behavior changes. The intensity in his eyes left no room for doubt. He wanted the whole family to understand that they were experiencing firsthand the stress and disrespect that had affected us for so long. It was time for a change. Mark explained to his parents that their involvement in our lives, and more importantly, in our child's life, depends on their willingness to change. This cannot continue, he said firmly. If you want to be part of our future, your behavior must change. His parents seemed stunned, but there was no room for misunderstanding. The terms were set, and the responsibility was now theirs. In the days following the party, Mark's parents contacted us. Their tone was different, more sincere. We want to make things right again, Connie said on the phone. It wasn't an instant solution, but it was a start. They showed a willingness to change, and for the first time there was a glimmer of hope. Maybe, just maybe, if we all work together, things could get better. With a lot of time and effort, we began to improve our relationship with Mark's parents. It wasn't easy, but it was important to set clear boundaries. We have to respect each other, Mark said during our first warm conversation. There were awkward moments and difficult discussions, but we slowly started to rebuild trust. Mutual respect laid the foundation for our new understanding and paved the way for a healthier dynamic. This journey toward a healthier family dynamic has not been smooth. There have been bumps along the way, 
moments of friction and misunderstandings. Several times we had to reinforce the boundaries we had set and remind each other of the respect we deserved. We have to stick with it, I said to Mark, reminding us both of the importance of this change. Despite the challenges, the effort has undoubtedly been worth it. When we finally welcomed our child into the world, a new hope for the future began to emerge within me. As I held our baby in my arms, I felt a sense of peace come over me. Mark's parents visited us. Their behavior changed completely. They smiled sincerely and supported us. I felt like we were on the path to something better. With our child in our arms, we knew we would move forward together into a better future. Our first family gathering after the birth was bittersweet. Mark's parents, who were more respectful and considerate, joined us and showed visible efforts to heal old wounds. Congratulations, Connie said, her voice warmer than I remembered. The initial awkwardness faded as we all adjusted to this new reality. Seeing them holding our baby in their arms without the old tension hanging over us was a sign of how far we had come. Moving forward was not just about erasing the past, but also about creating a new one. Each day brought small victories and moments of mutual understanding. Mark's parents began to respect our space and boundaries more, and there were fewer conflicts. It wasn't perfect, but it was progress. The joy of our growing family took center stage, and slowly we all began to heal by embracing this second chance. Creating new traditions became part of our journey forward. Sunday dinners at our home, with everyone pitching in, replaced the formality of earlier gatherings. That's nice, Mark's father admitted one evening, smiling genuinely as he helped set the table. Every meal we shared helped us grow closer again, and old resentments were slowly replaced by new, loving memories. It wasn't always perfect, but the effort to connect was there. An important breakthrough was our commitment to open conversations. If something bothered us, we spoke up. Let's talk about it, Mark said, urging us to come clean. These honest conversations helped prevent misunderstandings from becoming entrenched. Mark's parents adapted slowly, sometimes stumbling, but always trying. The new norm was transparency and working through problems together, which strengthened our relationship bit by bit. Celebrating milestones became a cherished ritual. Our child's first birthday brought everyone together. Laughter and joy filled our house. Connie even helped with the decorations, with a genuine smile on her face. Happy birthday, little one, she cooed, holding our baby tenderly in her arms. It was moments like these that showed us how far we had come. These celebrations were not only for our child, but also for the unity we were building. Of course, there were also setbacks. Old habits sometimes resurfaced and caused friction. But this time we tackled it head on. We talked about it, I reminded her, and we worked through it. Every setback was an opportunity for growth and a chance to reaffirm our commitment to change. It was clear that we were trying really hard. Mistakes were not the end. They were part of the process towards a stronger bond. Shared experiences brought us closer together. We went on family trips, attended events together, and introduced new hobbies into our lives. Mark's parents began to genuinely enjoy these moments. I never thought we would be so close again, his father confessed during a fishing trip. These experiences allowed us to see each other in a new light, and slowly the walls that had separated us began to crumble. Finding common ground helped us bond further. Mark's parents and I discovered shared interests from gardening to trying new recipes. I didn't know you liked this, Connie said one afternoon as we worked side by side in the garden. These simple activities became opportunities for meaningful conversations and deepened our connection. Slowly, the barriers of misunderstanding and resentment were replaced by genuine camaraderie and mutual respect. During difficult times, we found support in unexpected places. A health crisis brought our family closer together and highlighted the importance of sticking together. We're here for you, Mark's parents assured us in the hospital waiting room. Their presence during these difficult moments reinforced the changes we had all been working toward. It was no longer just words, but their actions showed that they were truly committed to being a supportive part of our lives. Rebuilding trust was a gradual but important process. Every positive interaction, no matter how small, added another brick to the wall of trust we were building. 
Mark and his parents consistently tried to slowly remove the old wounds. I appreciate your efforts, Mark said to his father one evening. These acknowledgments of effort were crucial and helped solidify the new foundation of our relationship. We look to the future with renewed optimism. Planning holidays and family gatherings no longer filled us with dread, but with anticipation. I'm looking forward to Christmas this year, I said to Mark one evening. These plans and shared visions gave us all something positive to work toward. Focusing on our shared future helped cement the changes and strengthen the bonds we were rebuilding. With each passing day, the future looked a little brighter. We celebrated our progress and recognized everyone's efforts. We've come a long way, Mark said, putting his arm around me as we watched our child play with his grandparents. It wasn't perfect and it never would be, but it was better. And that gave us hope. The love and effort made all the difference. Since we had reached a significant milestone in restoring our relationship, we decided to have a small celebration. Let's have dinner, Mark suggested, and everyone agreed it was time. Dinner was not just a meal, but a symbol of how far we had come. Laughter filled the room as stories were told. Mark's parents even offered to help with the preparations, showing that they really made an effort. It felt like a new beginning. There was an unspoken agreement that things would never go back to old patterns. One evening as we sat on the porch, Connie turned to me and said, Thank you for your patience. It was a simple statement, but it carried the weight of a thousand apologies. In that moment, we both knew that the hard work we had put in was paying off. This was our new normal, and it was okay. Over time, we have learned more and grown more. Every challenge became a learning opportunity. We are in the same boat. Mark reminded us when conflicts arose. Connie and her husband were more open to feedback, and we learned to communicate better. It was an ongoing process, but we were committed. The collective effort created a stronger, more resilient family unit built on understanding and respect. One day, as we were watching the children playing, Mark turned to me. You know, they have really changed, he said with a hint of surprise in his voice. It was true. His parents' respect and effort were now constant. I think we all have, I replied, smiling. Realizing this change was crucial because it showed that our efforts were not in vain. It was a collective change from which we all benefited. Our once strained relationship had transformed into a united family front. Attending holidays and family gatherings felt different, cozy, welcoming, and real. Mark's parents had become an integral part of our lives and respected us as equals. I love you all, Connie explained in a quiet moment on Thanksgiving. Those weren't just words, it was a feeling that came from the heart. This unit was the fulfillment of everything we had worked so hard for. Over time, we created lasting memories that defined our newfound unity. From family vacations to simple weekend barbecues, each moment brought us closer together. Remember this? Connie laughed and pointed to a photo from our trip to the beach. The memories were not just pictures, they were milestones in our journey. Every shared experience was a testament to how far we had come and how much we valued this connection. Life has a way of surprising us in the best ways. One such moment was when Mark's parents threw a surprise party for our anniversary. We wanted to show our appreciation, his father said, beaming with pride. This gesture touched us deeply and showed their commitment to rebuilding our relationship. These unexpected surprises became cherished highlights that continually reinforced the love and respect we had worked so hard to build. There were always challenges, but we overcame them with newfound strength as a unit. Whether it was a family crisis or just everyday stresses, we got through it together. Together we are stronger, said Mark during a particularly difficult week. His words resonated because they were true. The solidarity we achieved was not just about us, but also about setting a positive example for the next generation. Looking back on our journey, it is clear how much we have all grown. The difficult times, the arguments, and the heartfelt discussions have all been part of the journey we have taken. We've been through so much, I said to Mark one evening as I looked through old photos. Each image told a story of resilience and change. It was a testament to our shared desire to create something better for our family. 
The future held endless possibilities and we were ready to seize them. Our journey was not over yet, but the foundation we had laid was strong. To more memories, Mark said one evening, clinking glasses. The thought was simple, yet profound. We promised each other that we would continue to nurture the bonds we had worked so hard to build. With love, effort, and a little patience, our future looked brighter than ever. Maintaining the bonds we had built required continuous effort, but it was worth it. From holidays together to simple daily interactions, every moment counted. How about a movie night? Mark's father suggested one Friday. These small but meaningful activities continued to strengthen our bond. It was not just about avoiding conflict, but actively creating positive experiences. Every act of kindness, every shared laugh was a step towards strengthening the unity that we now valued. Teaching our child the importance of family was a priority. Family means being there for each other, explained Mark in a Sunday evening class. These teachings were not just words, they were integrated into our daily lives. Because the grandparents now played an active, positive role, our child had a living example of love and solidarity. The knowledge that we have laid a solid foundation for the next generation has made all our efforts worthwhile. The highlight of our trip was a reason for a big celebration. Let's celebrate how far we've come, I suggested, and everyone eagerly agreed. We had a big family reunion with much laughter, love, and reflection. Mark's parents even made a toast expressing their gratitude and love. It was a perfect moment that culminated in all the hard work and dedication we had put in. It was more than just a celebration. It was a testament to our renewed family spirit. As we reflected on our journey, we realized how important each step, both forward and backward, was. We had gone from being a divided family to being a united family. We have come a long way, said Mark's mother, echoing our shared opinion. The trip taught us patience, understanding, and above all, love. The difficult days now seem like a distant memory, replaced by a stronger, cohesive family unit. It was a journey worth every effort. With the foundation of love and respect now firmly in place, the future looked bright. We knew challenges would come, but we were better equipped to overcome them. Whatever comes our way, we will overcome it together, Mark said confidently. The strength and unity we had built gave us hope and excitement for what lay ahead. Our story was far from over, but we looked to the future with hearts full of love and unity.